Welcome to this channel. In this episode, we will discuss a maxim on equity. The video on the origin and development of equity is already uploaded. The link is given in the description box. Hope you will like this video. Kindly like, share and subscribe this channel. Equity follows the law. This maxim is based on the Latin term equitus secutor legem, which means equity will not proceed against or contrary to the law. The jurisdiction of equity can broadly be divided in three heads. 1. Exclusive jurisdiction 2. Concurrent jurisdiction 3. Auxiliary jurisdiction 1. Exclusive jurisdiction Under this jurisdiction, the equity plays an independent role where there is no law or there is ambiguity in the prescription of law. 2. Concurrent jurisdiction in this jurisdiction, equity brings new remedies. In the common law, the only remedy available was damages. The equity here brings the new remedies such as injunction, specific relief, etc. 3. Auxiliary jurisdiction In the common law, the procedure were rigid and inflexible. So under this jurisdiction, equity provides new procedures. While the equity have its own jurisdiction but remain with the law, it never supersede the law but it fulfill the latches and deficiencies of law. To understand this maxim better, we discuss the case of Strickland v. Aldrich. At that time, law was so that the eldest son will be the owner of the property by devolution. Here father wanted to make a will to distribute his property equally among the children. The eldest son had convinced the father that there is no need for the will and he will distribute the property among the siblings after his death. After the death of the father, the eldest son refuses to part the property among the siblings. The siblings went to the court. Here the court directed to part the property among the siblings. Then the question arises why the court take such a decision in favor of the siblings. The eldest son brought the father under confidence during his lifetime to keep the property in his trust and he will be distribute the property to the siblings who are the beneficiary by his act. So the court used the exclusive jurisdiction as the law is silent here. To understand more clearly, we have to take two important terms. One, legal estate. Say a person purchased a plot of land by paying consideration and it was duly registered under law. It is his legal estate. Two, equitable estate. Equitable estate is one in which the person have the right but not ownership. In such cases, if a person have the equitable right, he can claim it within the stipulated time frame as prescribed by law. The equity court will not entertain claim after the stipulated time frame. At last we may say that equity not only follows the law but also enlarges the scope of law, more particularly when applying the auxiliary jurisdiction. If there is a conflict between the two, the equity will prevail. There are many cases where the Indian courts had mentioned this maxim. Some of them are 1. West Bengal State Electricity Board vs. Patel Engineering Company Limited, Supreme Court 2001. 2. Shapan Kumar Pani vs. Kanara Bank and others, Calcutta High Court 2003. 3. Gautam Kumar Choudhury vs. State of Bihar, Patna High Court 2008. 4. Siemens Public Communication Networks Private Limited and another versus Union of India and others, Supreme Court 2008. 5. Shio Narayan versus Hera, Allahabad High Court 1885.